seeing nobody, we'll move on. Um, I'll ask uh, the, um, uh, the that uh, once we introduce this matter, I'll ask the applicant or the representative of the applicant to make a brief presentation about the nature and details of the request. And then uh, the board will have an opportunity to ask our questions of the applicant. And then after that, anyone else is, who's here who would like to ask questions or address in some way the application before us will have an opportunity to do so. I would ask that everybody who speaks uh, uh, give your name and address for the record that Carolyn is keeping. And, um, and I would ask that questions and comments be directed to the board uh, versus uh, to each other, um, at least to the extent that um, there are any tensions. <laughs> um, the, uh, the matter before us today is uh, this request for a special permit for a detached accessory dwelling uh, submitted by Jacob Alches, 401 Kennedy Road in Leeds, map ID 10-2. Um, and so I guess I'll ask the applicant or, the rep or his representative to, to tell us about uh, your request, please. Thank you, Mr. Wilbur. Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here today. Neighbors, my wife, Laura, uh, Carol, for your help uh, thus far, and to the member of the board. Um, yes, first and foremost, we're excited to be in Northampton in our recently purchased home, um, and for the future, building a family uh, in that home and building our life here in Northampton. Mm -hmm. um, and to that end, we want to keep things as sort of above board as possible. So if there's any questions or concerns, we want to do things right uh, for all intents and purposes. Great. Um, the proposed accessory dwelling unit uh, would be behind the home we recently purchased uh, in December of last year uh, at 401 Kennedy Road. Uh, it would be 253 square feet uh, with a small bedroom loft and a main living dining area. Uh, lots of windows uh, are kind of, it was designed for having maximum solar gain um, to be really energy efficient and uh, using lots of uh, reused materials and uh, most efficient materials for sort of balancing, balancing those two out. Um, and our intention with the dwelling unit is to live in it. Uh, we were married last year for a couple of years prior to starting our family and rent out uh, the main house and residing in the small the proposed accessory dwelling unit. Um, and then in a few years when it's family time, uh, transition back into the, to the main home. Um, Thank you. Okay. Congratulations Thank you. on the wedding. Um, this is the wrong one. Mm -hmm. So to uh, some the application itself is it's, so it's it's, uh, it's a special permit and that is required by which which section of the zone act ten point twelve. Accessory dwelling will be 
50 feet from one side lot line and close to 200 from the other. Just out of curiosity, what is the minimum setback? Um, just 15 feet 15 on the side. Feet. Yeah. So instead of 15 feet, we've got 50 feet and 200 feet. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there a walkway? Uh, I didn't include that in the plans. Uh, there already is a rough trail there, though, would change. Could become more driveway, perhaps. Uh, the driveway size wouldn't change. Uh, it, it's uh, sizable enough, I should say. Mm -hmm.
strictly require, we allow um, only 15% lot coverage, but they're not. additional parking space and, and for, for the yeah. 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 came tonight because I want to support this uh, request. I, I take a look at um, the difficulty that young people have uh, with college costs, things like, like that, with the high uh, cost of acquiring property. Um, and this to me is a wonderful new approach to getting young people anywhere. Schultz, I share Garrison Fields driveway, so I'm also across the way and he speaks my mind perfectly. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, my name is Mary I'm at 481 Kennedy Road, so we're two driveways down. Um, and I do have some questions about this and some concerns. It's something really new for me. Um, Kennedy Road is a single family dwelling road, um, and so this in my mind, at least, changes the zoning a little bit if we're, um, if we're adding on residences that allow for multiple people to live there. Um, and so I have some concerns about how that might change um, our road and how it might change our property values um, and what that means in terms of other homes, whether we could have one or multiple um, small dwellings on other properties. Um, so my questions are around the change, I guess, that it would mean um, in terms of our neighborhood. Thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts. I mean, my, 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 my first mm -hmm. thought in response is, uh, first of all, this isn't uh, the creation of a multifamily dwelling unit in the sense that the ordinance requires the homeowner to live in the premises versus creating, for instance, a two-family or three-family or four-family and moving out and renting out those units to, to people, none of whom own the property where they're located. My second thought is um, the ordinance contemplates this. And it, 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 it has, you say it's a change of zoning. Technically, no, it's, it's, a, it's, it's something that's allowed uh, provided that a special permit is granted by this board to allow it. Um, thirdly, just my personal reaction, given the size of the parcel, um, well, let me say this. Approving this doesn't create a precedent one way or the other that could have a domino or snowball effect in the rest of the neighborhood because every application would be reviewed separately, standing on its own. Um, the fact that we might grant this request has no bearing whatsoever on future requests. Every lot would be looked at differently and the circumstances would be looked at differently. What I'm seeing personally as a member of the board with this one is a, like a two acre parcel with an addition being put on in the rear as I understand it, um, with more than enough parking, huge setbacks from the sidelines. Um, and and I think one of the reasons that the, the, the ordinance has this, albeit somewhat vague, special permit um, um, as a, 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 an available method for a homeowner to do what the applicant is asking to do is to achieve a balance between avoiding over, you know, excessive growth or, or in a, a, an excessive increase in density by requiring a case-by-case -case analysis of anyone who wants to do this, um, but also balancing that against the idea that people on another level should have a certain amount of 
right to do what they want with their property. So it's always a balance. That's what regulations are. And, um, and that's, at least that's how I view it. I don't know if anyone else has any other comments or thoughts in response to the question. Um, well, certainly, um, I think the most important thing is that it doesn't set a precedent. The existing zoning rules that allow for density and uses remain. And uh, anyone approaching any parcel of land uh, in the zone uh, to propose what, what works with the zone. In, uh, in this case, the criteria of there being um, uh, whether or not there's any detrimental impact to the zone, I think it's pretty clear that we're not going to have um, you know, a, a measurable increase in traffic. There's no way there's no uh, public infrastructure you know, consequence to it. So then uh, the question is what well, Personally, I would doubt that it could do anything but raise property values. Their property value will work as will increase as they add taxable structure to it, um, and as owners on the property continue to improve it as, as I think, you know, folks around care about their property are continuing to improve it. So um, having it as as a the, the only thing that, that triggers this is that they're not putting it like on the back of a garage attached. or it's attached, not attached and there's no like they're not putting it ten feet away with a breeze with Other, otherwise they wouldn't have to come to us. Is that yeah, a true right. statement? They could go ahead and do that without without coming to us, they just pull a building from it. So right. So that's that's something that's really doesn't say um, that we should evaluate whether this application would change the characteristics of the neighborhood. First of all, I, I personally don't think it does, even if it did say that, but, but the ordinance doesn't say that. It's, it's just talking about you know, substantial detriment, and, and, and I, again, speaking for myself, I don't see that. Uh, it's my understanding that there can only be one of these on any property right so we're not talking about any scenario above and beyond what we're doing here now under the ordinance as i understand it that would allow people to start building four family right. apartment buildings on kennedy road right. this isn't a, that slippery slope that, that's what i was going to just confirm is that in this district it is it remains a primarily a residential district for only single family homes however there is a provision to allow small accessory dwelling units for the purposes of, um, you know, one, but under the defined differently for multifamily in that it has to be owner occupied, it cannot exceed 900 square feet, so you can't have large families move into that accessory dwelling because of the stipulations in the ordinance essentially uh, dictate that. So it still remains a single family residential district. Um, but allows a little bit of flexibility for people with different family situations who might in-laws yeah, in that might need to come and live with families or something like that. So. Yeah. 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 
so it still remains um, a district in which, um, from, a, from a residential standpoint, we still have to look at it. Yes. I'm Laura Tucker Pouches um, at Coral and Hinder Gates Life. And um, I want to address what I think the concern might be getting at, um, which could be seeing um, if we're going to be occupying the accessory dwelling unit and in order to um, rent the house itself as looking up to five-year plan. Um, you know, seeing a house that would be rented could raise concerns about who's going to be living in it and like what type of that, that's not something that we regulate as, as our board of insuring workers. Yes, yeah. Um, and I just would like to say that we'll be living on the property, and so our interest in um, inviting tenants who would not be raising a lot of noise or something on the street is hopefully you know, going to alleviate some of that kind of concern. Um, and after those five years, when we be moving back into the house with the family, we see the accessory dwelling unit more as what we guest house for our families to come, um, or potentially an in line unit like for Jake's dad who's older. Um, so that's just, just to give a little bit of context um, where we're seeing it yeah, in the neighborhood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments before we close the public hearing? Uh, after which we cannot receive any more information or comments, so I also want to make sure the board is all set and feels that we're comfortable that we yes. have all the information we need. Okay, so just a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor, it's unanimous. And then a motion, any, any discussion before a motion, or is a motion on the request for the special group? Well, it is a trip for all these heavy trucks. Yeah, I see that. 